that's the basics of how you whip your line. It's not difficult. A little bit of hand strength, anybody can do this. And well worth it. It makes your lines look all proper and ship shape and nautical and all that good stuff. And it's easier so they don't fray. Hi everyone, this is Melanie, my husband Neil, and our son Decker. And that's Bella, our dash hound. We are a normal Canadian family who has chosen to live a non-normal life on the ocean for the past 15 years. Join our family as we restore our ferro cement schooner Kiva, journey around Vancouver Island, and get ready to explore the world. So I'm going to show you guys um, how to do some very basic whipping on our lines. The camera around so, you can see. so one of the things that you need to do is what's called whipping a line. Now you can go the cheap and easy and kind of not the best way and frankly just use electrical tape to wrap the ends but it's kind of cheese ball. It's okay for temporary but it's kind of cheese ball. What's called whipping and this although it's black and does not it's hard to tell I guess it looks like electrical tape but it's not. It's actually what's called whipping twine. That is some other work that I did before. So this, this is a roll of whipping twine. This is black, comes in white, comes in red and blue and all kinds of different colors. I just happen to have the black out. And I am no expert by any stretch of the imagination. I'm just learning how to do this, but I thought I'd whip out the video camera and show you guys. So two books that uh, we've got and have been recommended to us and are amazing is this one, The Sailmaker's Apprentice, A Guide for the Self-Reliant Sailor. It's everything that you could need to build your own ditty, bot, ditty kit. Um, you can fix your own sails. My God, you can make your own sails if you're really that ambitious. Uh, the other one is the old classic. Ashley's Book of Knots. Every knot I think ever created in the past 200 or more years is in here. Um, Clifford Ashley, the man who wrote this, um, he actually went to all kinds of different professions. Everything from sports to logging to butchers to sales, everything you can think of. It's incredible. It's a bit difficult to understand at times, uh, just because of the language, but it is incredible. Well worth finding um, and adding to your library. Okay, so you make a loop at the end of your line. You can see the open end, and then this is the end that goes to my spool. And you want to make a loop, I don't know, whatever that is, about an inch long. And I'm going to be wrapping, whipping it from here to about here, a half an inch of whipping, but you want to make about an inch or more loop. And you'll see why. So take that and you want to wrap it. And starting, I don't know, I started about there. So you can see the distance from the end. It's, I don't know, a little less than half an inch, quarter of an inch maybe. So you want to wrap it once and wrap it over and crisscross it to secure the end. And then, doesn't take long. It's just a matter of wrapping it. Keep it nice and tight like that so it looks good. You don't want any of the color, the rope underneath, the line underneath peeking through. And it's a funny balance of tension because you wanna have, you wanna have enough tension so that it holds it. This um, uh, whipping twine has a beeswax coating on it, so it does actually stick to itself. Um, and you can buy this in round, which is what this is, or you can buy it in flat. Um, either one is fine, just preference. I happen to have this. So and you just keep wrapping it. So you wanna have it tension but not insanely tight like this is my fingers do not hurt after doing this just want to have it nice and tight there's my end loop and i don't know 
looks pretty good, I think. So then I happen to have this, which is very handy. Neil has been holding on to it forever. It's called a bosun's knife. It has different tools. It's kind of like a Swiss Army knife, but for sailors. This is my blade. So, I don't know, I'll do about like that. And then, this is where you got your loop. You put the end you just cut, you put it in and through and hold it in place. So now you have your loop and then the end, the working end that you just cut has come through the loop and you're holding it in place. Now what you're gonna do is take that other end down here and I probably should have left it longer, but and you're going to pull, thereby trapping this piece inside. But uh, I left it too short, so let's have there we go. This fancy loopy thing. I don't know what it's called, but it works like a hot dam. So. Gotta keep pulling. Oh yeah, it's coming. I should have left a longer line. For future reference, leave a longer end. Oh, there we go, there we go, okay. So, so you can see the loop has disappeared and trapped the end right there. So what I'm going to do is pull this and pull this loop so that it stops halfway. You don't want to pull it all the way through. You want it to stop halfway down the wrapping that you've just done. So let's see if I can get it to do that. And this is where that tension bit comes in. If you wrap this too tight, it can be almost impossible to get this through. In which case, you've got to take it apart and redo it. So. Yeah, I might have done this a bit tight. Oh, well. There we go. Pulling through. Ah, there. So I think, looks like it's the join is right about there, which is perfect. So then you put this part back, take out your blade. Always keep these babies sharp, otherwise it is a giant pain in the patootie. Cut. And cut. There we go. Give us a fun!